just starting to rain now. And wind's picking up. Oh, shit. Hold on to that car, brother. Hold on to it. This is not fiction. This is fact. Well over 50% of all people that get lost in the wilderness are either hunters or anglers. And like all survival situations, it happens so easily. The weather might be great. The day's warm and sunny and the wind light. You've got a good boat and fishing tackle, and you'll only be gone a few hours. And yet in one instant, one turnaround of circumstances, a situation can turn into an ordeal and sometimes even a nightmare of epic proportions. My son Logan and I are putting ourselves into a scenario that happens for real every year. This is a common story, and nearly every fisherman's been through it, especially if you go on flying trips. In this case, with my son, so it's a father and son trip. Plan the day, it's the big long day. Boat for quite a few hours down the lake, maybe even pack a lunch, end up at a set of rapids like this, spend the whole day fishing. Got one. Look at that! Yay! Then you go to leave. And either your motor won't start, or you're out of gas. Now you're in a survival situation. And that's the case for Logan and I. We're stranded at the bottom of the lake, miles from safety, miles from our cabin, here in Northern Ontario. The camera that followed us in this far leaves us here alone. And in five or six days, a plane will come for us and we'll hope to signal them from wherever we end up. There are cabins dotted here and there on this lake, and we need to get to whichever one is closest. But that's many miles away. So at this point, you just gotta put all the realities together. There's no way of paddling ourselves home. Normally, I would say we, we stop and do all of our assessment check, go through everything we've got. But in this case, because the sun's going down and because there's a ton of firewood, I'm actually going Sort of breaking my... Fire? Yeah, yeah, get a fire going. And then we can have a big fire going, so we've got it going through the night. What I'm thinking is, why don't you let me get the fire going? Okay. Why don't you clean the fish? That's good. Good. Okay. Let's, let's do this one. Well, Logan works on the fish. The reality is that we're we're in a, a what is... Well, it's not an established campsite, but it's a place that people do frequent to fish. There's even, actually, in the fire pit, there's a, a grate and an old frying pan, so doesn't make it not be a survival situation. It still is, but at least we have a few advantages. And I've got something that I'm pretty sure I can start a fire with because we do not have matches and we do not have a lighter. But we can make a spark. We've got strikers. Found this big old frying pan just around the campsite. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it to cook up the fish with. Too many bugs. Often what I find is the best thing in a situation like this is to get Logan doing something that's uh, familiar to him, that uh, feels comfortable, like uh, cleaning the fish. Because in a survival situation, if you can feel comfortable and do things that are familiar, psychologically, you're just a little stronger. It's a lot to think about when you find yourself in a survival ordeal. Someday, Logan may find himself in a survival situation where all the familiarity is absent, like in a jungle or a desert. For now, as his father and the one with the skills, my job will have the added pressure of keeping his motivation up and keeping him from becoming too casual about survival because that's when bigger problems can strike. 
This place might get used a lot, but I think it only gets used a lot in the spring. It's been a while since people have been here, for sure. A nice campsite is one thing when you're on a well-stocked camping trip. But when you're stuck there, days away from safety, it might as well be in a jungle. Survival is still about adapting and using whatever means you can to make it through. We've got some bug spray. The bug spray is highly flammable. So theoretically, a spark plus a highly flammable substance should equal a fire. I want to do this quick before the spray evaporates. Bug spray quickly runs out, which is why I usually suggest bug jackets and screens for an emergency kit. Whoa! Nice! That worked like a charm. See that look? Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. Man, that bug spray took that spark. Bang! It's like gasoline. It's good to know. It's kind of dangerous. We have the advantage of starting off with the day's catch. The hope is we won't be skunked when it comes to fishing for survival. Too often, lost victims waste their first 24 hours being complacent, when in fact, they should kick right into action. On the other hand, it's good to settle and get organized before making any rash moves. All right, fire, heat up our fish, and the sun's dropping down. The only thing I'm really worried about now is a really bad night of mosquitoes. I think it's better for Logan and I just to eat this up now. Could invite problems with bears. We don't usually have any issues with bears or any trouble, but we've got a lot of fish smells around the campsite. Mmm. Wow, that's good. Nice job. My instincts always tell me to immediately gather as much information about my situation as possible. It's not the same for Logan. He hasn't honed any survival instincts that he can draw upon yet. So I need him to pay attention to what knowledge I'm looking to gather. We need to do zone of assessment number two. What are we carrying with us? All right. A hatchet. Hand saw. One of these uh, travel thermoses. Unfortunately, it's all rubber on the outside. So I'm a big fan of bringing metal cups. You can boil them. We've each got a seat pillow from the boat. Full set of fishing tackle, which is great. And there's a few things in there I think we've got we can use. Like there's some uh, light sticks, right? Yep. Uh, there was the bug spray that you had. And then that's it. There's nothing left. There's no bars to ration out. There's no sandwiches to cut up. There's no cookies to give out or to count. This was our day pack. Uh, we had some paper towels. Logan's got a cup too. There's your cup, by the way. And unfortunately, it's also plastic. Huge bonus, we've each got rain gear and rubber boots. Brought all that stuff with us again, just expecting a day out, not knowing what we're gonna get weather-wise, so I think that's about it. Finding ripe fruits or berries or any kind of plants is completely dependent upon the luck of the timing in a survival ordeal. I often hear the comment, why didn't you just gather berries? But most wild berries are only ready for two weeks out of the year. Fortunately for Logan and I, we're here at just the right time, in the middle of black bear territory with a million ripe berries. That's incredible, because this is enough to actually make a difference for us, you know? It's not just a quick munch. And we can travel tomorrow with them. Let's go, let's do this. Right time of year to get lost. Yeah, that's for sure. I can tell you how often I'm in a place and I get told about how great the berries are, or the fishing is, or whatever, and then it's like, well, it's just the wrong time of year. And this is one of those situations where the energy spent gathering food is equaled by the amount of food that we can gather. Be able to sit in a spot like this and have literally thousands of blueberries <laughs> at our fingertips uh, is a huge bonus. And it, it'll serve Logan and I really well, putting the odds in our favor by gathering all these berries right now while we're stuck here. It's a good thing to do. Logan is experiencing a survival situation that so far consists of good luck and familiarity. He's at a campsite. We've caught fish. The weather is nice. We have blueberries. If he grows complacent as a result, he won't be of any help to me in effecting better survival when we really need it. It's adversity that has taught me my greatest survival lessons. But how far am I willing to go to get Logan to experience adversity? It's the toughest question any parent has to answer. It's 
our second day of surviving in Canada's far north. And with our boat motor disabled, we're challenged with the task of paddling many miles to reach a cabin at the other end of the lake. We've caught fish, picked berries, and the weather is in our favor, for now. The only option we have is to paddle this big tin boat and paddle it actually uh, against the wind, unfortunately. But, you know, this is, that's the way it happens. Probably to the tune of a thousand stories a summer. Fishermen break down, their boats break down, and you find yourself paddling. In this case, we know the lake's empty. We also know there's other cabins that we might be able to get to along the way. So Logan's just uh, lifted up the motor, so it's out of the water. And uh, we're going to get paddling. Pushing a tin fishing boat forward with a pair of canoe paddles is not easy. It drives home the importance of every fishing boat having proper oars instead of paddles. For want of a good set of oars, people have died. There's no reason why we can't fish along the way. I mean, we gotta eat. We'll get the wind with us for now. That's good. You know, if the wind really picks up, we could use the tarp for a sail. It's true. The tin boat represents a way out. The time out on the lake represents relief from mosquitoes and a chance at catching food. And it would seem that the survival winds of fortune are blowing in our direction. We got a tailwind. Mm. Why don't we put the tarp up? OK. Exactly. This works. It's the work. It's going in the right direction. There we go. There we go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's easier than paddling. Let's just keep this up and see how far it takes us. Whoa! Mine's ready. Yep. Woo! I don't know why a lot of people just seem to be panicky about drinking water out of Northern Lakes. I don't think you can get water much cleaner than this. We've got to stay hydrated no matter what. And the old trick for not feeling hungry is to keep drinking as much water as possible. As quickly as our tailwind came up, it stops and we're back to paddling. The fact that the wind is at our backs is another stroke of luck. Unfortunately, we're paddling away from a massive field of berries. Earlier this morning, though, while Logan slept at sunrise, having struggled through the night, I got busy in the berry patch, proving again that proactive survival is the only survival. Surprise for you this morning. Check it out. Awesome. I'm hoping that Logan is understanding now how important it is in a survival situation to never be passive. Logan and I know we can catch some fish so we can eat. It gives us food. We've got plenty of water. Other than getting a good shelter set up, what more do we need? The reality is we need to travel. We need to get ourselves out of here. And so it becomes a decision. Do you stop and fish? Do you spend a lot of time fishing? It's an important decision to make because you spend a lot of calories motoring all the time. And uh, if it's a long, long way, then you've got to temper it with getting some food energy along the way. We're just gonna take a bit of time to see if we can catch something. If not, we're back to paddling. Okay, we got one. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Yes, all right. Just a little baby pike. Just a little guy. Well, we've got one. As my dad would say, we wouldn't have starved. We won't start tonight. Back to paddling. It's fishing for survival now. Everything is kept. You never know when the good luck will end. And after many hours of paddling, our attention turns to sheltering for the night. And Logan is frustrating me by letting me make all the decisions. See this clearing up here. Let's pull into it and see, see if it gives us any good locations to set up a shelter. 
Logan's usual calm and passive personality leaves him content with me picking out a spot. But I need him to think, because two minds are better than one. And two days without much food takes its toll on my own ability to think clearly. Well, I know Logan's counting on me to make a good decision here. And just took a shelter instead of saying, well, you, you go for it wherever I want to do it. But all of a sudden, I feel pressure because he's got to make it through the night, too. If I don't come up with an answer soon, the night's going to be upon us. Can we shelter here or not? That's the question. Maybe this is why I've always survived alone. I don't like the added pressure of thinking for Logan's benefit out here as well as mine. I need his help, and I don't feel like I have it. Now that we stop, I think the day of paddling's gonna wear me out a bit. Now I'm starting to feel the lack of food. I don't wanna let Logan down, I gotta figure this out. As Logan and I search out a place to shelter for the night, I come up with an idea that I have never tried before. I just had what might be a stupid idea. I don't know, or it might be an awesome idea. Um, there's a ton of spruce trees here, easily gathered, cut down, small trees, right? And I was looking at the boat, and I was thinking, what if, what yeah. if we make two beds? No, if you come and look at the boat, put two beds, two spaces, Triangle on one end, down at the back end, triangle on the front end, a pole across. We've got the rope, we can tie it all up so it's secure. Drape the tarp over top of that. We basically have a mobile tent at that point. That's gonna be a very uncomfortable sleep. I don't, I don't, I don't think it will be. Okay, well, think about this. Let's say we move to a new location tomorrow. We're gonna have to take it down, put it in the boat. Like, I'm just thinking about that. I mean, it, all we would have to do every night is spend a concentrated hour getting bows and five poles and we could set it up every single night and we would be able to sleep in the boat, anchor the boat in a protected little cove instead of coming in on shore. The only thing we can't have is a fire, but we can have the fire right on shore. If it was just me, I'd definitely not do that. Uh, you know what, we'll, oh, I'll put one bed down and you try it out. Lie on it and if you think like, oh man, I could sleep like this, great. You know, right. because it's, I, from my experience, it's not gonna be that much more comfortable up on the land. Okay, so seriously, hear me out. All right. This is what I'm talking about. We fill that slat and that slat. You can have the wider one. Fill it all up with evergreen boughs. Okay. Nice and big and cushiony, right? Yep. Then we take and we put a pole up here like this, like a triangle. One at the back and pull across the top. And then the tarp goes over top of that. Yep. And then we just crawl in here. You, just, you can sleep right there. We should be protected. Have, so the tarp comes to the outside of the boat so the rain drips off and away. Yep. And then when we want to, when we go to paddle tomorrow, we just take down the tarp and the poles and get on our way. What do you think? Or would you rather just do the same thing but on land? Well, let's, let's just give this a try. Yeah? Might as well. I've never tried anything like this before. So the thing for me is if it, if it works, then it's awesome, right? If it's it mobile. Doesn't, don't worry. If it doesn't work, be a rough night tonight, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Hey, if it doesn't rain, we're fine. Last night we slept out by the rocks, right? So. Yeah. Okay. All right, well then, first things first, we've got a bunch of boughs. Let's start filling it up. Let's see how, how it works. Okay. All right. Logan clearly doesn't like the idea, or at least doesn't think it'll work. But I have to let my own experience take the lead role here. A bow bed is just a bow bed. And it can be a lot of work to build up on the land. The ground here is damp, but the tin boat is solid and dry, so long as we can keep it that way. Working together can be more efficient at completing the task. One of us gathers while the other builds. You put your feet up in here every once in a while, stretch out legs, but I think this can work. Yeah, try it out, tell me what you think. Not that bad. I'm gonna work on the tarp and get that part ready because I'm seeing clouds come over now. And just like that, how fast we work becomes imperative so we can be prepared for the approaching storm in the western sky. In survival, you're always either dealing with weather or preparing for it. All right, there's some more of this bug spray again. 
Oh, 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 look at that. That's crazy. Rock and roll. I got a fish to clean. Well, it's just a little guy, but it's food. There's no reason why Logan can't try to increase our food bounty. Here we go. Toss him in the frying pan. Toss him in the frying pan. Okay, all right. Whoa, whoa, don't, don't let him jump, don't let him jump. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. There we go, oh yeah. Sun's going down, and I'm just gonna hope that uh, weather holds out throughout the night. I don't know, I kinda like my new contraption there. I think it looks pretty cool. Our hopes for a clear night sky are quickly passing as the clouds gather in the west, and the wind begins to pick up. It's just giving us enough time to eat our catch. Mmm. I'm getting fresher than that. Ah, oh, that's awesome. And no bones. That doesn't look friendly coming in. We hold still now and wait to see if this shelter was a good idea or not. This will have to do. That's definitely gonna be rain coming in. I'll be surprised if we don't get hit by that. Within moments of saying this, the wind picks up with an unforgiving speed and begins to blow our fire into the forest, forcing me to jump to action while Logan holds down the shelter. Uh, just starting to rain now, and wind's picking up. Oh sh! Let's hold it. No worries, don't panic. Hold on to that car, buddy. Hold on to it. We'll be right there. We'll get this fire out. Go in slow. Careful, if we knock it down, we're screwed. Oh, this is a bad idea. Let's just hold tight. Sailor's Delight. Got a red sky over there. That might be it. With the worst of the storm past, it's a good idea to take advantage of the lull in the wind and build up our shelter so we can at least try to sleep through the night. Night, buddy. Let's just try to go. 
path through the night. Cold and uncomfortable. I don't want to have to do another night like that. This was not the best idea. Are you going to try and sleep a little longer? Mm -hmm. Want to leave you sleeping? Mm -hmm. well, the tarp's ripped bad. Logan's not sleeping in the nights very well, so I've got to cut him some slack and let him sleep through the morning. People get so worried about Jardia. Beaver fever. That's a, that's a misnomer. And Jardia is transferred by fecal matter, uh, and it doesn't. It's not just beavers. It's all kinds of animals that will transfer. With Jardia, you're really not going to feel the pain until probably or the problems until about seven days later. And then if you're out of in, in back in civilization, it's just a couple of pills and you're and you're done with it. But dehydration can knock you down in three days. So this is a nice big lake. I have no issues drinking the water straight from the shoreline here. The lack of a normal supply of food, combined with minimal sleep, is no doubt contributing to Logan's general sluggishness and lethargic state. But I've got to keep us moving. What's that? Yep. It's pretty clear that the weather is giving us both some forgiveness here. We've got lots of time to deal with things, but yesterday we got caught, so tonight I prefer to get off the water early. And again, we're so fortunate to have the wind at our back. Then we can just sort of drift with this wind, and Logan can fish. He has more luck than I do anyway. Fishing just takes on such a whole different meaning when you have to catch fish to, to survive. And so far, nothing. Today, we'll start early to try and find a good shelter location. I'm not trying to be picky or anything. I'm just trying to find us a decent place to set up a shelter and be protected from storms. You'd also have some wind, keep the bugs down. Bugs were pretty bad last night. And we're striking out here. Man, there's no flat ground. Fortunately, because there's so much daylight, you know, I can afford to be a little picky. I also don't want to leave it so late we run out of time. Miles later, a beach that looks great at first offers up no better shelter. Sand looks really nice, but right in behind in here, this is just all spruce bog. If that wind dies down and it gets dark. If there are mosquitoes, this is where they're going to be. Anyone who has ever canoe camped knows how difficult it can be just to find one small spot to pull up on within many miles of shoreline. This is why people have tended to congregate in the same areas on shorelines for thousands of years. We go to and we build where it makes sense to do so. At least along the way, Logan and I can still try for food. It's Walla. It's Walla. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. Come on. Come on. Bring him in. Bring him in. Yeah! That's dinner. Put him in water. Keep him fresh. All right, so there we go. That's what we've been trying to do. We've just been drifting. We're looking at a place to set up our shelter, sort of going along the shoreline just really slow. We're paddling. There's no wind here today, so it's like kind of being stuck in the freshwater doldrums. And there we go. Logan just caught us dinner perfectly. Nice job, buddy. So we have something to eat again tonight. It's been hours of paddling with our fishing lines trolling in the water without a single hit from a fish and with no wind to push us forward either. 
So this fish is a huge boost to our morale. But we're still plagued with the search for a decent spot to pull ashore and spend the night. What do you want to put in? There or over by that stick? Over by that stick. Okay. Still alive. Still very much alive. Remember to talk to camera and good luck. Don't forget your cameras. Yeah. Okay, so since we decided on staying just out in the open tonight, I have to uh, make us a nice bed. I figure that it's not gonna rain because beautiful blue sky right now. So if it does, we've got the tarp nearby so I can grab that quickly if I need to. In the meantime, I gotta get all these spruce boughs up and uh, start weaving them into a bed. I'm just kinda shoving them into the dirt here Try to make it as flat, low as possible. Get rid of some of these rocks. I'm just trying to weave all of these uh, spruce boughs in together. It's the best way to keep the heat in and uh, make it nice and comfy. We've been able to film Logan catching a walleye, which is great, so that gave us dinner. But then uh, I decided to match him. Two perfect walleye. I need my sleep and I haven't been getting it. So I'm hoping uh, this is gonna be a better idea than sleeping in a tin can. Unfortunately, I'm not just making this bed for me. My dad has to fit on it too, which means that I have to listen to him snore all night, which really sucks. How's it going? Good. Uh, well, that's looking comfortable. I've got the fish all cleaned up and ready to go. Awesome. So I'm gonna uh, clear a little space over there and get a fire going. What we have in our favor is the good weather. Without it, this would be a much different story. Uh, Logan's pretty much hung up on fishing, so uh, I'm gonna be the one to get the fire going again tonight. And unfortunately now, I'm all out of that bug spray. That was kind of the magic ingredient, but I still have paper towel here. I'm gonna do is sort of rip it up in the middle here. Get it down in there and get it so the fluffy part, the part that I just ripped up, will catch a spark. I wanna get cooking that fish. There we go, there we go, there we go. All it took, that's all it took. It just took a spark and a paper towel. And with the paper towel roughed up and made fluffy, I got my flame. Beautiful. It'd be good if tomorrow we pull out the, the maps, try and figure out where we are in relation to any outpost camps or cabins or anything like that. That's probably a really good idea. And uh, see if we can make it to one, because if we get hit with more storms again, well, it's not going to be so pleasant. Loons have been singing up a storm. Just dancing and playing and calling. Logan's just settling in for the night. I've been able to bring loons into me before by using my harmonica. make it through this night clear of any rain. So it's an easy sleep under the stars. But now, onwards we go as the tedium of paddling must continue. Sitting still won't do us any good, no matter how beautiful the area actually is. I'm starting to stink. You always stink. Not as bad as your feet, aren't you? How, uh, how far are we paddling? Forever. We're still many miles of paddling until we may come upon one of the cabins on the lake that we can take advantage of. 
Off camera, Logan and I have become a bit testy with each other, brought about no doubt by the tedium. This reality that boredom and tedium can drive you nuts in a survival ordeal is often overlooked, yet it can be very dangerous. If you're alone, you can become depressed and lethargic. If you're not, you can become annoyed and touchy, which is why proactivity lifts the spirits during survival. So here's the option. It was either about another eight mile paddle or about three quarters of a mile across land. Let's, let's take the land. But we'd be, we'd be leaving the boat, right? Now, the reason we're going across land is because there should be a cabin down on that other side. Yeah, let's take the rest then and leave the boat. Okay, let's find a place to land. This move, however, is risky. It can be dangerous to travel across even as little as a few hundred yards. But survival is always about calculated risks to make your situation better. Survival is about moving forward. It's about going home. How about right here? Sure. OK, all we have to do is go in a straight line here. Just keep the sun in one spot on your forehead, and then we'll try and sort of stay straight as we go through. Okay. It's the best way without a compass to do this. All we have to do is get up, go up and over land. Three quarters of a mile might not seem like very long ways, but through the bush, it is. Don't underestimate how dangerous this decision is. All that has to happen is to get turned around in the thick bush, and then what's hoped to become a short hike becomes a nightmare. Watch your footing, too. Yeah. I don't want any snapped ankles out here. One wrong turn, one branch in the eye, and everything changes. It doesn't help when the clouds come in and obscure the sun. No. It starts raining, it's not going to be good. Well, let's just keep going. Now, the calories are burning up fast. This is an exhaustive undertaking fraught with the potential for accidents and missteps. It would have been safer to simply keep paddling, but the tediousness of that was taking its toll, and it was time to make a change. Let's just hope it was the right change to make. Because right about now, it feels like the forest is closing in on us. An all too familiar feeling in a survival ordeal. Out here, it's not overly dramatic to point out that one wrong turn could put us somewhere where we will never be seen again. You know what? It looks like it's thinning out up ahead. If that's the case, you may be at the lake. Ah. Ow! You know what? I see water. We're at the other side. Woo. You want to look around to the right? Yeah. All right. Hey, dude, rehydrate yourself, eh? Get a bunch of water into you. That was a tough hike. There's nothing on this side. Shoot. See, we know there's a cabin on this side of the point we just walked all the way across. Just don't know if we've hit to the left or to the right. What I did, did try to do was air us on the side of being too far to one direction. It's an old trick with compass that you can do as well. And basically, you know you want to go in a straight line, but instead you on purpose go too far to the left so that when you hit the shore, you'll look to the right and that's where your thing should be. And we tried that. For this, but I don't. I definitely don't see anything to the left. Hey, there it is. <sighs> Salvation. It's 
So this has really paid off. Uh, one thing I can almost guarantee is that the cabin will not be locked. Nobody locks cabins in the north, ever. That's just mean. Okay. This is huge for Logan and I, so... I don't care what's inside that cabin. It's just gonna be good to get up in there for tonight. Wow. Huge, huge bonus. Incredible. Do you know what? This is the way of the north. Little trapper's cabins. And in this case, this is a fishing lodge. You can see the door's just left open. So it looks like they've been taking care of the place. Yeah, it looks nice. We stay here, we light a signal fire tomorrow, and we wait for plane rescue. So the one thing we did actually bring with us from the boat as well was the uh, saw. So it just fit nicely in the day pack, so I thought I'd bring it along. So that's gonna help me to take down this tree a lot easier than using my knife. We've decided to build what I would consider to be a classic signal fire with three green trees. More than anything, I simply want Logan to learn this process to grasp the concept of a fast lighting and thick smoking fire to be used for rescue. That should hopefully be enough to, to get a nice good signal fire going and get out of here. Okay. I'm gonna weave these back in here. We've shoved birch bark and even rubber and plastic from the camp inside the branches to help make the smoke thick. It's not very environmentally conscious, but this is about survival. It looks good. There we go. Signal fire ready to go. As first the night spent this time in comfort, and then the morning passes. We'll sit and wait for the sound of a plane in the far distance. You hear that? Yeah. Okay, Mom. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, wait till we see him. Don't light it yet. Just because we hear him doesn't mean anything at this point. Okay, here he is, way over there. Way over there. Okay, light it, light it, light it, light it. Hopefully it'll do its thing. It's coming right this way, he's gotta see it. This is never a guarantee. Of course, this pilot knew to look for us, but often the smoke from a rescue fire can appear to be nothing more than a wisp of swamp steam and not smoke at all. It takes much training for searchers to become good at spotting lost victims in inaccessible areas and remote forests. And there are other camps in the area, so there's no guarantee that this is the one that we made our way to. That's him letting us know that he's here, he's coming. When they fly that low like that, he's letting us know he's seen us. Even though Logan and I put ourselves in this situation, and even though Logan has the advantage of having me, his father, with him to take the lead role and guide him through difficult circumstances, I know that he would still feel the relief in this moment as the plane touches down. Because it'll take him back home, back to safety, back to all the comforts and trappings of civilized living, far removed from the reality of being lost in the woods, far from the reality of survival. <laughs>